Hi everybody and welcome back to my channel on wells and pumps. If you like these videos, uh, everyone just hit like or subscribe. I'd really appreciate it. It helps me get more videos out there so people can learn more about this stuff. Um, if you have new wells or an existing well, at the very top of your well, you're going to have a well seal. And that's what this is. And it's kind of dirty. I'm sorry. Um, this is what holds your pump up in your well. So if you go out to your well head, this is what's going to hold everything up. And guys, this is a, a plastic, I call it plastic well seal or ABS uh, well seal. Um, and this will hold a couple of hundred feet of uh, pipe if it's PVC. Um, and maybe, maybe a little bit of galvanized if it's not like really, really deep. But you get... You get too heavy and these, uh, these plastic well seals will bust, they'll crack in half. Um, but what you have is you've got a, see this, this right in here is cracked too, if you can see that little crack down at the bottom. And see a lot of people don't, you wouldn't even see something like that unless you took it out. Uh, it has a rubber in between these two pieces, it's like kind of like a sandwich. So. What happens is when you tighten these bolts down, it expands this because it's squeezing against it. And that's what holds your pump in your well. Then on the very bottom where you've got this T, everything will be set in here. Everything will be sitting like this on top of the well. So you've got your T, you've got your hose build, and you've got your plastic one inch mail that goes inside your tea. This is what comes out going to your house. This is what feeds the water going towards your house to your pressure tank. So underneath this I just put a fitting on here <clears throat> but this T will actually be screwed on to your pipe underneath the well seal. And you'll have 20 foot sections and if it's galvanized it's 21 but you'll have 20 foot sections every section of pipe and until you reach the the pump and, and whatever section it's on so if you've got 200 feet of pipe you'd have 10 pieces of pipe and then your pump would come out um, a lot of people don't know about the well seals the ABS the plastic well seals I would use you know for a shallow well or maybe just a couple hundred feet um, when you start going up um, in the well size in other words the deeper your well goes, the heavier your pump's going to be and the bigger your pump's going to be because of the depth of the well that you've got. So you've got steel well seals too. Uh, the steel well seals are made just like this, but some of them are split. They're not solid on top like this is. Uh, so you have a split well seal. Um, I will mention this, guys. If you're doing something yourself, and like I said, this is only information, so... If you, if you try to take well seals out or you try to pull a pump on your own, um, I've just got to throw this out there as a disclaimer. You know, there, there's all kind of things that can happen. I have fish pumps out because other people has dropped them. They, they don't know what they're doing. Uh, they get tired of waiting, so they get one or two or three guys to try to pull it, and they wind up breaking a well or... or breaking the pump off in the well, then you got to go fishing. Uh, when I say fishing, you could try to fish a pump out that's broke down in the well, and I have fished for a pump that um, you may could get out in a couple of hours. It may be two or three days. It may be a month, uh, and there's a possibility that you may not even recover the pump because if it's too heavy, you just can't, you, you can't get it back. Um, I've not seen too many that we can't recover, but the deeper the well is, the harder it is, depending on where the pump will set. If it falls in a well, you know, 100, 200, 300 feet, it's going to be really hard to get the pump back. Uh, I have seen times to where people has actually had to put a pump beside of another pump to be able to get water out of a well. And... 
that's okay to do, but the only problem is when you go to pull that pump out, uh, you take a chance on getting that pump hung up because of the pipe and the wire and all that that's, that's in the well to begin with. So if you're going to pull these, just a little bit of information. If you untighten these bolts, do not take them completely off. Do not take the nuts completely off. If you do, you see how this is poking through? This bolt will fall out and it'll go down into the well. If you take them all out, what happens is this whole plastic piece on the bottom will come off. The whole piece will come off. The good thing is, is the solid ones will only go down that far and when you pull the well sill out, if you've got these type of bolts, you could actually piece this back together. But now if you've got a steel well seal, it's split into two pieces. On the bottom, it'll be split into two pieces. What happens then is on this side, is if you take these bolts out, on a steel well seal, this whole plate will fall off. It'll fall off into the well. If that happens, a lot of times it will get hung up in the well and you have a hard time getting it broke to go back down in the well. It'll hang up and it may be, it may cause you not to be able to get your pump out of your well. So if you guys do loosen these up, do not take them completely off. Just loose them enough to where you can get this well seal out of the well casing. Uh, number two is a lot of people don't know about where to do chlorine in the well. Sorry for my car, it's a mess. I work out of my car sometimes. Um, the well seals have a vent. This is a well vent. This is what gets air down in the well. If you have to chlorinate your well, I would say instead of using the powder, if your well ain't too bad, chlorinate your well at least maybe once a year. That'll help keep iron uh, down in your well. But normally this will be screwed on there real tight. And what you do is you can get a little pair of pliers and you can take this well vent off and it just unscrews out. There's nothing that's going to hurt anything if you take this out. You put a uh, something in here to where you can, like a funnel, that's got a long funnel on it. You can pour Clorox down in this hole and it just goes right through here and it'll pour down in your well. I wouldn't say use powder unless you just have a really bad iron problem, but if you're just chlorinating your well to kill bacteria or maybe a little bit of iron, I would use regular Clorox and just pour Clorox in this hole or get a funnel and pour the Clorox and do one gallon. Put this back on, screw it back on tight, and I would do it like in the afternoon when it's almost getting dark. And then that way, just leave the Clorox in the well until maybe the next morning. Get up and run run your water and run it until you can't smell the Clorox anymore. And then it'll be good to go. You'll be good to drink it and it'll help kill the bacteria. If you pour the powder in this way, guys, um, the powder, it's okay and you can use it. Um, but the powder, when it falls down through here, it's going to fall and it's going to get on the wire. It's going to get on the pipe. It's going to get on the side of the casing. And it's going to take a whole lot longer to pump it out. So what you're doing is you're just washing the well up and down. And it's, it's just going to take longer. So if you do that, just, you know, it's not going to run out uh, the smell anytime soon. It's going to take a little while to get out of your well. Um, if you're looking at going back with a well seal, you can always get a 6 inch, 1 inch nipple. That's what this is in here. This is a 1 by 1 by 3 quarter T. So this is what you need to be able to piece this back together. It's a 1 by 1 by 3 quarter or a 1 by 3 quarter by 1 T. This is a 3 quarter hose build. And another thing that you can check is if you got your power and your water drained down, you can always unscrew this from the top, guys. And if there's water in here, 
then you know that this pipe is holding water. If not, if there's no water in this T when you take this off, um, the check valve could be bad in the pump. You could have a broke pipe in the well. Uh, if you take this out, there should be water standing right here, at least to, at least up to here. So if you take this out and you cut your pump on and the pump pumps water and it's pumping water out here and you cut the pump off, turn the power off, and the water level goes back down into the well, then you probably need to pull the pump because there's something wrong. Um, there should be water standing here. So I hope this video helps. Guys, give me a like. Subscribe to my channel. I hope this gets a pretty good bit of views. I'm trying to uh, do as much information as I can. Maybe I'll do some on fittings, uh, the type of glue, uh, the pipe dope that you put on the threads, uh, Teflon tape. Uh, just leave me messages in the in the lower part of this and let me know what would interest you or what you're uh, interested in. And I thank you for coming to my channel. Have a nice day, and I'll see you next time.